Seeing shops packed to the brim with specialized equipment can leave anyone wondering where to start. I'm gonna let you in on a secret that took me years to really figure out. Most projects can be built with a simple welding machine and an angle grinder. There's a bit more to it than that, but not as much as you might think. I'm going to show you the basic essentials you need to get started, as well as a few nice to haves. No need to take notes, I put a full list in the video description. First up is the angle grinder. It is arguably the most versatile metalworking tool available, and the first tool to start with for most people. Four and a half inches is the most common size, and they come in a variety of styles. My favorite is the paddle trigger. Now cutoff wheel allows this tool to slice steel like butter. A hard grinding wheel removes mill scale and allows you to shape your material. A flap wheel removes material a bit faster and flexes slightly to provide a good contour. And a wire wheel can be used to remove rust and slag. Always work safely with this tool, keep the guard in place, maintain a good grip on the tool and follow all other safety rules. Let's talk about welding machines. In order to pick up a machine, you need to select the process you want to run. Stick welding or shielded metal arc welding is good for steel over 1 8 of an inch thick and uses the simplest and least expensive equipment. It does have a bit of a learning curve, I'd say medium difficulty. MIG welding is great for most makers and automotive enthusiasts. It is the easiest to learn and has the ability to produce very clean welds on thin or thick steel. MIG does require a cylinder of shielding gas, which adds an additional cost. Flux cord welding is similar to MIG, except no shielding gas is required. The welds have a slag coating to remove and generally have a bit more spatter or little BBs next to the weld. TIG welding is the most versatile, with the ability to weld a wide variety of metals and thicknesses with one setup. It produces an extremely clean and precise weld, leading to its common use in aerospace and high-end automotive fabrication. Now, there are a lot of multi-process machines available today that can do MIG, TIG, stick, flux core all in the same package, and that sounds really great, and they are great. I have two that I really like. Um, but they aren't a silver bullet. Let me tell you two things that a lot of people are disappointed to learn after they get one. The first is that MIG welding and TIG welding are gonna need different shielding gas. And so if you wanna be able to run both processes, then you need to have two cylinders, which adds some additional cost. The second is that the TIG welding functionality on most of them is pretty limited compared to a dedicated TIG welder. So make sure you know what you're getting. And if your main process is TIG, then your money might be better spent on a dedicated machine rather than a multi-process machine. Before we continue our list, let me introduce you to my new welding and fabrication courses that are already helping a lot of people to learn the process of welding with a lot less time and frustration. It's an affordable way to learn in your garage in small manageable steps, just like I would teach you if we were working together in person. Now let's continue our list by looking at some essential safety gear that you're gonna need because no project is worth getting hurt over. You'll need a welding hood or welding helmet. I'd recommend an auto darkening unit and they are really nice because a lot of them have a mode where you can use them as a full face shield for grinding. You'll need gloves appropriate for the process that you're running. And a welding jacket may not be essential, but I recommend wearing one. Safety glasses and earplugs for cutting are a must and depending on your process and ventilation, you might need a respirator. This small one fits nicely under my welding hood. Now let's look at some common accessories that you might need as you get started. For MIG or TIG welding, you'll need a gas cylinder. And for stick and flux cord welding, you'll need a chipping hammer and a wire brush to be able to remove slag. You'll also need some electrodes or filler wire for the processes and materials you're going to weld. Now that's the list of essentials. And I know there are quite a few things there, but it's probably not as long as you might've thought. Now I'm gonna talk about a few nice to haves that really make things much easier and allow you to move more quickly and efficiently as you work through projects. First up is clamps, and I've settled on two styles of clamps, locking plier style C clamps and F style bar clamps. I also use these switchable magnet squares to hold things in place while I tack weld them. A welding table makes life a lot easier. There are portable welding tables available for a relatively low price. I've used this one for many years. Now while an angle grinder can cut tubing, a chop saw or band saw is a huge time saver and one non-essential piece of powered equipment that I would recommend getting early in your journey. So check out the description for a full list of these essentials to get started with welding, as well as a whole bunch of videos that I'll link in there to show you a little bit more detail about some of the things that we've talked about. And I'll also link my online courses if you wanna check that out to work through the learning process in small manageable steps. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.